Hello guys, what's up? It's Abid. Welcome back to my channel. In the previous set of videos, I have introduced you to the Ubuntu operating system and I have showed you how to navigate the GNOME environment and how to use the terminal. And I said that what makes Ubuntu so special is its unique features and softwares especially concerning the robotics applications. So for today, and as I promised, uh, I will introduce you to your first robotics tool, which is ROS, the robot operating system. But before starting with ROS, I'm assuming that you are already familiar with the Ubuntu environment. So if you are not, uh, please, uh, go ahead and press on the upper right corner of the screen right now uh, to go and watch my videos concerning Ubuntu. So let's start. First, I have prepared, as usual, a document here with me to guide me throughout this session. So let me tell you a bit about ROS. So what is ROS and why is it so important for robotics. Uh, imagine that you have a certain robot, where a, human, a humanoid robot, let's say, with a certain sensor for obstacle avoidance. So the sensor, let's say a depth camera, will perceive the distance uh, between the robot and the environment surrounding it. So let's say it perceives a certain, uh, let's say, obstacle so it receives this information and it should communicate this information that there's an obstacle nearby to the actuator that are running, uh, that are making the robot move the legs, let's say. So they need to communicate, the sensor needs to communicate this message to, with, the act, with the actuators and the actuators need to receive this message. So how to achieve all of this? Here comes Ross. So ROS provide the robot with a communication uh, system, a communication, let's say, platform that creates a connection among all the parts of the robot for its good and normal functioning. Uh, now, let me tell you some background information about ROS that might be helpful. First, ROS is created by uh, Open Robotics, and this is basically a team of developers uh, all around the globe, and they create uh, open source products. And these products, when I say they are open source, I mean their source code is available online uh, and can be accessed by anybody, and they are on GitHub. Uh, so you can access the source code, you can modify it as you want. And Open Robotics has created many other robotics tools like Moveit and Gazebo Simulator besides ROS. And of course, all of these products are for free. Now, the nice thing about ROS is that it is supported by a large community especially because it is an open source software. Uh, so if you have any question or you faced any problem uh, using Cross, you can go ahead and post your, post your question on the, uh, on the Ross Answers forum, to which I have uh, attached a link uh, in the description down below. And also, if uh, you want to uh, stay updated with the latest uh, news concerning ROS, you can go ahead and sign up for a membership. Of course, it's free in ROS uh, Discourse, uh, to which I have also attached a link in the description down below. Now, ROS has many versions or distros uh, that are available on the official website of ROS, uh, which is ROS.org but essentially they can be categorized into uh, ROS and ROS2. Of course, as the name indicates, ROS uh, was first released, I think back in the 2007, as ROS. And later on, the ROS2 version was introduced as an improvement 
for the first version with all uh, the enhancements and from these enha enhancements essentially and most importantly Rust 2 uh, uses by default the DDS uh, middleware. DDS stands for uh, Data Distribution Software, uh, Data Distribution Service and middleware is a, uh, let's say, a piece of software that is attached to another software to provide it with uh, certain services. So in this case, the DDS uh, will provide ROS with connectivity services and essentially it gives it the ability for uh, real-time data exchange and this real-time data exchange is very useful and it's actually needed in many sensitive uh, real-time applications uh, in many different in different domains in the defense and aeronautics uh, for example in NASA in their space applications they need uh, such connectivity services uh, like the ones provided by DDS uh, also, they are used in uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, smart grid management. And also, in addition to this, Rust 2 supports Python 3, unlike Rust that supports Python 2, which is by now officially a dead language. It also supports the newer uh, C++ 11 and C++, uh, C++ 14 standards, unlike ROS. So for these reasons and many more, I have decided to teach you in these tutorials ROS2 and not ROS. Uh, actually all the effort by uh, Open Robotics right now is being invested in the, the development of ROS2. Uh, and also you can find already online uh, some documents, some guidelines for the migration from Rust to Rust 2. So if whether you are a beginner or you have already a certain experience with Rust, I advise you to go ahead and start with Rust 2. And also you should note that there's no such a big difference between Rust and Rust 2. Uh, they essentially share a lot of common points and a lot of similarities. So it shouldn't be that hard if you already know Rust to learn Rust 2. So with all of that uh, in mind uh, and without any further ado, let's start by showing you how to install Rust 2 on your system. First, you open your browser. Here I'm using Chrome. And you just type in Rust 2 and you enter here the first link that appeared in daxrust.org and you go for installation and here you can choose out of a three different distros uh, I will choose for these tutorials the eloquent distro which is the most recent one and I will choose the Debian packages with, which are like binary packages and I think they are very suitable uh, as a way for installation, especially if you don't have any prior experience with ROS. Uh, and this is a better option, much better than the other option, which is to build uh, ROS2 from source. Now, the steps to follow are posted in here, but I will go over them anyway. So let me split the screen. So as you can see first, you need to set up your locale. Uh, make sure to have a locale that supports UTF-8. Uh, it doesn't have to be English US. For example, if you want to check your locale, you can enter this command in your terminal. And as you can see, I have the English US UTF-8. Of course, as I said before, it doesn't have to be English US. It can be any other locale that supports UTF-8. This is the most important thing, UTF-8. So if you don't have this, like like here, you need to enter the these three commands, okay? Now you should add the ROS2 apt repositories. And these are the repositories or the, let's say, the magical computers uh, in which all the packages available in ROS2 are there. 
So in order to install them, install in order to install any package available in Rust2, you need to enter these two commands in order to uh, interact with the Rust2 repositories through the apt package manager. It's very similar to apt-get uh, for the Ubuntu repositories. If you uh, have watched my Ubuntu videos in the previous set of videos. Uh, next, you should add these, uh, the, these repositories to your source list using this command. And finally, you are now ready to install Eloquent. So first, make sure to update your system using this command to uh, download the up-to-date version of Rust2. And then uh, make sure to install Rust Eloquent desktop and not bare bones, okay? You need this one, not this one. And you need to understand that if you installed Rust2, that doesn't mean that you can use it directly. Uh, if you entered, let's say, any Rust2 command that begins with Rust2, the system won't understand it unless you source it. So you need to source Rust2 in order to use it. And in order to do that, you just enter the following command. And here, as you can see, you need to uh, input the uh, distro that you have installed. And in this case, it's eloquent. But the thing that is that this command won't work uh, for multiple terminal sessions. So let's say you opened up a new you terminal, you enter this command, okay, you can use Rust in this terminal session. But you, if you open another session, another terminal session, uh, this won't work. So you, you, you will enter any Rust2 command and the system won't recognize it. So to avoid this problem, uh, you need to use the bash rc, you need to access the bash rc, which is the file that I have talked about in my Ubuntu videos. Uh, and this is the file where there is a certain code that runs each time you open up a new terminal session. So in order to enter it, you, I will use here the nano text editor, home, bash rc i don't know if i have said this before but if the uh, directory begins with a dot so this means that this is a hidden directory you cannot access it from the gui you only access it from the terminal as follows bash rc and uh, as i said this is the file you just copy this command line and you paste it in here i have already done that uh, obviously, so I won't do it right now. And you save Control S and then you exit using Control X. And most importantly, a very important piece of advice. You need to know that there are some minor variations bit among the Rust2 distros. So some distros have uh, may offer some other functionalities, some different options, etc. So sometimes you will need, let's say, to install another distro other than Eloquent. In this case, my advice to you is to not install more than one Rust2 distro on your system on the same machine at the same time. Not Rust2, actually, also Rust in general. Don't install more than one ROS distro or version at the same time on your machine because this will create problems. Actually, once I had a certain error while I was using ROS, actually I was using it with Gazebo Simulator, I will show you later on how to do that, and I faced a certain error that I didn't know where it came from. So I spent actually a couple of days searching for the error inside my code and I didn't find any error. And guess what? Because there, was, there wasn't any error in the first place. And of course, the shouting began and things began to break all over. Uh, and finally, and lucky me, I found out that the problem was that the system was getting lost when I was running Ross. Uh, because I had two different Rust distros installed on my machine at the same time. I had Eloquent and the Crystal installed, and this created problems. So make sure 
to remove your current distro if you want to install another different ROS2 distro. And to do that, you use the following command. Uh, the first portion of it will remove anything related to Eloquent and the second portion will remove any other uh, utilities and uh, libraries or files installed side by side with Eloquent for its good functionality for its normal functioning. With all of that, now you have ROS installed. You need to make sure that ROS is properly installed on your system. So in order to do that, you can uh, print your environment variables. And to do that, you enter the full command print in, and this will give you all the variables inside your environment, inside your system. And we don't need actually all the environments, uh, all the environment variables. We only need the variables related to us. So to do that, I will use the vertical line, which is the pipe, the piping, uh, I talked about it in the Ubuntu videos, and then you use the grab command. And I will grab the word pros, okay? And this will give you a list of information about, let's say, the ROS version, which is in this case, which should be two in this case, and the Python version, which is a three, and the ROS distro, which should be eloquent. If you have all of these information, as I said, uh, then you can be assured that your ROS distribution, eloquent distribution, is properly installed on your system, so you can carry on. Now, uh, if you want, let's say, to install a ROS2 package, as I said before, you will use the apt package manager. So sudo apt install, and then you enter ROS, followed by the ROS distro, in this case it's eloquent, and finally you enter the name of the package that you want to install. Please note that this command right here won't work if you didn't follow my lead and installed the ROS2 using the Debian packages or the binary packages. So if you installed ROS2 using, if you build it from source, this command here won't work. So let me give you an example. Uh, RQT is one of the packages that is available inside Trust 2 for visualization purposes. So later on, I will show you how to visualize all the nodes and the communication components inside Trust while it is uh, running. And this is available and offered by RQT. And of course, I will use the star symbol, the asterisk, uh, which will install, in addition to RQT, all the utilities and the tools available side by side with RQT. Uh, of course, I won't do it right now because I have already installed RQT, so you can do it yourself. And I will, don't worry, I will talk about it more in the next videos later on. Now you have your ROS2 eloquent distro available and uh, ready on your machines uh, and uh, later on in the next video actually I will uh, talk more about the uh, building blocks of the ROS uh, system which are the nodes and I will show you how uh, you run them and how you make them communicate with each other and that's it actually for this video and if you guys like this video and you found it uh, very useful uh, please hit like and subscribe for more and i hope to see you on the next video